On this season of Destination Earth, Akane and I take to Canada's smallest province of Prince Edward Island. PEI is known for many things, including sandy beaches, red cliffs, and being a land full of potatoes. As we explore this amazing province, we'll show you everything from the main city of Charlottetown to the stunning landscapes of Prince Edward Island National Park. Where are we off to today? Let's find out. Prince Edward Island National Park is divided into three sections, the western, central, and eastern. We're beginning in the smallest section called Greenwich, which is the most eastern portion of the park. Within this section of the park, there are three different trails. Now at this point, we've already hiked two of them, Havre Saint Pierre and Talactic. And now we're getting ready to hike the third and final trail of the day. So the last trail that we're gonna be doing today is the yellow one, and it's probably the most popular one in the park, and that's the Greenwich Dunes Trail. Just as the Talactic Trail ended, the Dunes Trail began with a smooth and protective boardwalk. You see, when you start exploring coastal regions where sand dunes exist, you'll often find boardwalks are installed to help protect the most vulnerable sections of the landscape. Like other areas of the coast, the sand dunes are prone to destruction, as they are without a sturdy base like you might find in the forest. Wind constantly shapes the dunes and the landscape. Small plants and grasses that grow within the sand are the only structure that helps them maintain their shape, so it's important not to walk on these areas. Thankfully, these dunes are far enough inland that sand accumulates and erodes more slowly this less wind-blown environment allows plants not suited for growth in shifting sand to actually survive. This stability allows for large mats of lichens to grow, which in turn help to further stabilize the dune. As you walk, you won't have to wait long before you get your first glimpses of a 20 meter sand dune at the distance. People come to this trail specifically for this view and well, perhaps the beach at the end. Once you transition from the gravel to the boardwalk, you'll begin crossing a series of marshes that separate the mainland from the beach and ocean. Parks Canada has done an amazing job installing these floating boardwalks, which make up an important and interesting part of the trail. Along the walk, keep an eye out for seabirds and geese. We were lucky to see some babies, but they did a great job hiding among the foliage. The scenery along this stretch is amazing. You'll enjoy every moment of this 4.8 kilometer or three mile moderate rated trail. There is essentially no elevation gain here or on any trail within Prince Edward Island. So providing you can handle the distance, this trail is pretty suitable for most members of your family. As we walk, we soaked in the sun-filled sky. Without much tree cover, we enjoyed the sun's rays on our skins the entire walk. We have had wonderful weather on this trip, and so far, PEI was treating us well. Nearing the end, it wasn't long before we gave up the boardwalk and traded it in for some sand. For those who don't enjoy climbing in the sand, just know that the climb up this dune is relatively short, and you only have to do it the once. They do have wooden pieces on the ground and rope to help you get upside the dune as well. Because anybody who has tried walking through the sand knows all too well that it's actually a lot more challenging than what first meets the eye. From the top of the dune, take a moment to turn around and enjoy the views. In my opinion, this is one of the most magical views of the entire hike. And perhaps the view that most people come to see. Here, you can look over the massive dunes and the floating boardwalk below. Behind me, these are 20 meter sound dunes, like I said at the beginning. Just over the edge, you come to the beautiful blue waters of the Atlantic Ocean. This stretch of ocean lies along the northern shore of the province. This section is also called the Gulf of St. Lawrence. This body of water connects all the maritime provinces of Nova Scotia, Prince Edward Island, 
and New Brunswick, alongside its neighbors of Newfoundland and Quebec. Once on this side, you'll notice the winds pick up a bit. This would be a great spot to set up your fey active sand-free blanket or beach tent. Not knowing this site even had a beach, we unfortunately left ours in the car, which was really too bad. After our time walking the beach, we noticed a sign for a look-off that climbed back up the dunes in a slightly different spot a little further down the beach. Appealing to our curiosity, we made our way up the sand-filled hill to the only designated look-off along the trail. Here we peered out. To the right, a field of green, dividing the beach from the rest of the land. From here you can't tell it's marshy, as the green moss covers the expanses and the trees make up the landscape in the distance. As expected, no mountains or even significant hills exist, a statement that is pretty much true across the island as a whole. As your eyes follow the horizon, you can get a view of the two large dunes. They stand out from the backdrop, and you can immediately see why this area is a protected part of the National Park system, and why these dunes are worth a trip to see. With this trail finished, our time in Greenwich had come to an end. From here, we were heading 45 minutes west to Stanhope, the central region of the park. There, we would be starting a whole new series of adventures and hikes and exploring the sections that were unique to this particular part of the park.